we are with this week's maintenance tip for all you do-it-yourself mechanics. So listen, changing magneto timing is fairly easy to do. I mean, basically, you're going to loosen the two hold-down clamps on a magneto, and then this guy rotates, and that's how you change your timing. For those of you, you're getting advice, hey, you're, everything's running too hot, so you're going to change the magneto timing or you're installing the mag or whatever the case might be. Usually what I'm going to show you happens when somebody is messing with the magneto to change timing. When you loosen up your hold down clamps, you've got to pull the magneto out and make certain the gasket is completely free. See how this one is stuck to the magneto case right there? That's right where the hold down clamp goes and that's where you have the most pressure. So what happens when you go to change the magneto timing and you haven't verified the gasket is free, you end up with this. You got a good shot of that, Darian? Yeah. You can see the magneto gasket is cracked. Guess what happens? Oil leaks down the inside of the engine. So here we have a very pristine looking RV4, just drop dead gorgeous, a very dry engine compartment. The owner brought it and said, hey, I got two oil leaks and they just messed with the magneto timing. So that's exactly what's happened. And we could show you, but everything's kind of cluttered back in there. Right underneath each magneto is the drip of oil. So now we got to go back in and replace these gaskets. So again, when you loosen up the hold down clamps, pull the mag out a little bit. Verify the gasket is loose. If it's been sitting there a long time, there's a very good chance you're just going to have to pull the mag out a little bit and replace the gasket, or you're going to end up with one leaking. Okay? So welcome back to Base Leg. Here's our second maintenance tip for the week, for, especially for those of you doing your own condition inspections, unlike the RV-14 and the RV-10s. So the nose gear on those two airplanes actually have the old Mooney shock absorbers, four of them stacked to allow shock absorption in the main nose gear here, in the nose gear actually. One of the things we noticed when we lowered the tail on this RV-14 is this nose gear actually hit the ground. No matter how low we would put the tail back there, it's not supposed to do that. So you can see here, we put new donuts in there, how much of a gap we have. And this is nice and solid now. Before we could swing this thing. And Darren, if you'll bring the camera up here and we'll show everybody what we're looking at. These are the donuts down in there. You got a good view? Yep. Okay, those are the donuts that are the shock absorbing portion of this nose gear. And so as they age and the weight from the engine is on them, they'll shrink and you'll get a gap up there. Let me see if I can point to it between the mount right here and the rubber. Yeah. So you can actually take up some of the gap in the book. You're allowed three washers. They're special washers that they send. They're shaped. They go up inside here and three of them, they're an eighth inch thick each. So basically you're allowed to have about three eighths of an inch of gap, no more than that. This one had over a half inch gap, so there was no way we were going to take it up with washers. So we had to replace the rubber mounts and now you can see everything's nice and tight. I have one washer in there, so there's still room as they shrink to add another couple of washers if we need them down the road. So again, don't forget to check this. Lower the nose, either have somebody hold it or you can point back there. We've got a big cement bucket back there that holds the tail down so we can work up in the front of the aircraft. Okay. All right.